Hi, and welcome everybody to Let's Talk Automotive. Today we have with us Francesca Brandel, the lovely managing director of both KTM and Husqvarna. <laughs> Let me correct you there, Vish. Okay. Um, Husqvarna Motorcycles, uh, or Husqvarna in English, it's uh, our sister brand, which has got Swedish roots. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. So I'll just, I'll stick to Husky. But let's, let's call it Husky. Yeah, let's talk about the big elephant yeah. in the room. Brad, KTM, MotoGP, everybody's blown away. It's been absolutely phenomenal, you know, seeing Brad progress through back in the day on the Honda Interface 100s, uh, getting through the ranks, and Red Bull KTM has got such an amazing platform for talent to, to filter through. So the Red Bull KTM Rookies Cup, uh, then progressing into Moto3, Moto2, I mean, Brad giving us a Moto3 World Championship was already unbelievable i still remember the goosebumps and i had similar goosebumps when he crossed the checkered flag not so long ago to get us or get ktm as our first motor gp victory so it's been an incredible journey we're so proud of him and i think in times of desperation and need and people needing inspiration it's exactly what what we need and it could not have come at a better time for this country as fran your background where, where did you start to, to um, reach this point? Well, I started off doing business school and I very much was interested in motorcycles from a young age, initially more into super bikes, but uh, before um, I ventured off into the working world, I finished all my exams and, and all my projects at, at school. In the last two years, I already started an internship at KTM. I worked with our local motorsports club, became the club secretary, and I just, my, graph, my love for motorcycles grew even further into the off-road segment. You know, like people are so passionate about it. So it's easier to sell something that you believe in and are passionate yeah. about than selling toilet paper, you know? Yeah. So well, then, unless in the Corona crisis. Well, I guess so. Yeah, but well, that would have been an amazing business. <laughs> yeah. Or sanitizers, so, but yeah. I, I finished school and then I, I just wanted to get into the working world. So I decided whatever job there is, I'll take it on. So I ended up at an attorney's office and I worked there and um, I did enjoy it, but my passion was lying elsewhere. So I applied at KTM and they took me on and that was nearly 17 years ago. Mm. And, and okay, so you've been in South, so you're not a South African by no. birth. Okay. I'm Austrian, okay. born and raised, and um, I moved to South Africa in 2008, thinking I was going to be here for six, seven, eight months, and, and now, now we're 12 years later. Wow, yeah. yeah, and I mean, I think that's, that's great to see, because I mean, Austria is a beautiful country. Yes. Um, and yet you stayed on in South Africa. I stayed on in the middle of the global recession. economic crisis, yeah. uh, hitting a recession. And I think all the challenges we've had and we've had to face, it's just encouraged us more as KTM to excel, you know, to pick up market share, to launch product, to diversify in the range, to really suit the markets and the people's needs. And I think we've, judging by market share, which I take as a, you know, as a judgment by the buying public. Um, measure of Consumerism. It's, it seems to be working out for us. Yeah, uh, I think you guys are doing well. And uh, coming back to MotoGP and Superbikes, I remember a time when the RC8 was in South Africa. There were two limited edition I Red Bulls. I remember that. Um, I was fortunate to have one of them, and Stunning. it was an awesome bike. It mm -hmm. was noisy. It was raw. There was no electronics. That's exactly what it was. It was raw. It was like back to the basics of a superbike. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, you mentioned you 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 are passionate about superbikes. Mm -hmm. um, the RC8, you think there's any chance of them developing something in that space? We, we know the market may not be ready for it mm. from a point of just from a sales point of view and the R&D yeah. that's going to go to put a new bike on the platform. But the engines are there. The I engines mean, are there. Look, so, they're very sophisticated RC16 engines. Yeah. Um, the RC8 was phenomenal. We loved it. Um, when we opened our dealership in Port Elizabeth the other day, I actually need to find out they had that Red Bull KTM RC8 on the floor. So I need to find out whether that was your old bike or whether Could that be. was the I, other I, one that came into yeah, the country. I must remember the number because with my one, we put on the power commanders, the fueling modules, because awesome. it was a bit, it was a bit aggressive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a stunning, stunning bike. I regret selling it. But so anyway. <laughs> I, we, we keep on being asked that same question. And funny enough, I went on social media last night and I saw a drawing of an RC9, you know, um, just by somebody making it up in Photoshop. But there's interest out there. And what we're doing, MotoGP, has really lifted KTM's game in the street segment. You know, we're being taken more serious and super bike technology would like to translate visually into RC125, into RC16. Mm. 
I think super bikes have sort of declined a bit in terms of sales. So what we like to do is all that performance, all that technology, we like to put that into, into a naked platform. You know, KTM is known for stripping motorcycles to their bare essential, being performance oriented and really just putting on what's needed. So essentially you strip off the fairing, you have a really, really powerful naked bike, which we call the Beast 3.0, our 1290 Super Duke R. And I think maybe that's what the market needs and wants these days. So Fran, you mentioned another brand that's joining KTM and Husky. What, could you tell us a bit more? Yes, uh, we're talking about the Gas Gas brand, which has been known for trials, you know, been winning many world championships. It's a brand that's rooted in Spain, uh, around the beautiful town of Girona. And, um, we have decided that it really makes sense to bring it into the KTM Group's fold as well. Like we touched on before, using the same engine platforms, technology, uh, plus offering trials, um, offering a different kind of technology. It's, it's very exciting for us. So you'll see a lot more later in the year. We've already launched them um, in terms of racing. We've already won our first world championship race in motocross and yeah. Gas Gas uh, being a red brand, you know, now you've got the orange, the white yeah. and the yeah. red. Um, it's really exciting, you know, it's, it's a different angle to what we do on the KTM and Husqvarna side. Over the years, we've become so focused in racing and winning and, you know, like obviously about 300 world championships really speak for themselves. But sometimes we forget, you know, it's about having fun. So the link between Husqvarna and KTM, <laughs> yes. if you could perhaps maybe unpack it a bit for, for us. Yeah, for a lot of people, it wasn't quite the logic, um, you know, not, not move. But um, people don't understand that there's been so much history with KTM and the original Husqvarna, I would say. Husqvarna has been known for motorcycles, bicycles, chainsaws, whatever you, you can think of, they probably have done it. So it's been a brand that's been around since 1903. It's got so much heritage and Husqvarna was very pioneering in motocross. So what happened um, about two, well, not more, more decades ago already, um, when Husqvarna was bought out, um, the original engineers, a lot of them decided they want to split away, launch their own new Swedish brand, which then became Huseberg. Huseberg is a brand we then integrated into the KTM group because we believed we've got so many synergies when it comes to racing technology. Um, we used to be quite known for our 70 degree um, engine and uh, there's, there's been a lot of success around Huseberg. So when Husqvarna as a brand was up for sale again, we decided why not put together what originally was one in any case. So we amalgamated Husqvarna and Husaberg and relabeled it into Husqvarna with a Husaberg technology, which rides on the KTM platform, which is where a lot of our synergies come in. And it's been a major success. I know you guys launched models during this year. Is there anything, I mean, what did you launch this year and what is it's happening in 2021? It's been such an exciting year and we went into 2020 flat out, one launch after another. My marketing manager was just like flapping, you know, he was like, how are we going to do this? There's three brand new models. So we've launched the 890 Duke R, which has evolved from the 790 Duke. Then, like I touched on earlier, the 1290 Super Duke R, yes. the new beast, uh, power and torque, unbelievable. And crazy, yeah. And what was really important for us was to fill the small adventure segment as well. So the launch of our 390 adventure has been extremely successful. We've picked up so much market share and it's such a versatile bike. We had the Duke before, but the adventure really lends itself to exploring more, traveling more and just having fun. And the price point as well, obviously very competitive. An it's, adventure it's a good motorcycle entry level market. under 100,000 Rand, yeah. it's, it's a yeah. winner. I yeah. think that, that's been a big shift uh, economically as well, because with the parallel imports not coming into the country, mm. there's been no sort of transitionary bikes where people Correct. have had to, either you're spending 300,000 mm. or what? And now at least there's an alternative. Yeah. Which on, is a brand side. new motorcycle, not a second yeah. hand that's been handed down. So yeah. it's, it's had um, some phenomenal feedback. Yeah, yeah. no, no, definitely. And mm. what does Fran do in her spare time? Fran spends a lot of time around motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love, I love what we do, you know, so it's a passion of mine. That's why I've been with the brand for so long. So. Um, before lockdown, I would spend a lot of time going to races, you know, following motocross, enduro, cross country, and you name it. But I do have a bit of a life outside of the KTM world. Um, I love being outdoors. I love running, cycling, you know. South Africa is such a beautiful country that, you know, sometimes 
we get stuck in this bubble and we just do what we're supposed to do, but we sometimes just need to step outside and enjoy and, and love this country for what it is. Oh, no, thank you for that. And there you have it, everybody. The lovely Francisca Brandel, myself, Vishnu Singh. We're signing out for Let's Talk Automotive. Thank you.